Stillwater's Morning Scramble. Glad to have you here. Jesse Martin always in on a Thursday. And State Senator Bill Coleman is with us also. Good morning, Bill. How are you doing? Good morning from the friendliest building in the great state of Oklahoma. You're in the Capitol then, right? That is correct, sir. Uh, it was at or either Jesse's house. so <laughs> Right here in the studio. This in studio, pretty, yeah, yeah. This is pretty friendly. Hey, this is probably yeah. not the, the, the place to bring this up, but I uh, did you get the link I sent you yesterday? Yes, I did. Everything worked perfectly. I sent that off to the to the mom, and, and they got to hear me talk about their son on the radio. So well, that worked out great. Yeah, it was an interview we had before, and it was about uh, uh, you know showing sheep at uh, at State Fair Arena and mm-hmm, stuff, which mm-hmm. was pretty cool. And we talked about that. And then you asked if, and that had been posted on uh, on our site here and the Morning Scramble Twitter page and stuff. So so I'm glad that worked out. So, but I didn't. I, I was I was impressed it was there. I. I'm not a Twitter guy, so uh, I, I, I don't I don't see the tweets there. So they, I was pretty impressed. You guys do that, Steve. Well, very good. So we don't always not all not all interviews are up to that kind of standard. So, <laughs> but no, I'm I'm glad that worked out, and she was able to, to hear it too. Because no, I I get comments like that from time to time. Do you have that? And if if we if, if we do, and often we do, we we try to provide it because. You know, you forget that that's kind of a kick if you hear your yeah your family talked about. So I'm glad you could do that. That worked out nice. So it yeah, worked out good. Hey, uh, what's going on at the state capitol? I, I want to start at the bottom of the list. That uh, uh, I saw a picture of the of the uh, three thousand pound seal, and uh, which is really cool. And it's not a, a seal seal. So let's, let's explain this. It's the uh, it's the state seal, the great state of Oklahoma seal, and it, it's bronze and it does weigh three thousand pounds. And it is going in at the, the new ground floor rotunda. Previously, the ground floor was actually the basement, and uh, it was not part of the rotunda. So the workers the last year or two had cut a big hole in, in the ceiling between the ground floor and the first floor, and have made the rotunda, the, the circle go all the way down from uh, floor number five down to down to the ground floor. And what what's in the middle of that on the ground floor is a 3,000-pound bronze seal of the great state of Oklahoma. And, I walked in, I believe it was either Monday or Tuesday, and they were setting the seal up around where it's going to have its, if you will, final resting place. There were a couple of workers underneath that. They had it propped up with concrete blocks. I was like, that does not look like where I want to be right now, <laughs> below, below that big seal. But they had a, a somewhat of a crane uh, markup in there, and now the seal is in place, and they're doing some detail work, evidently, before they put uh, the grout or whatever it is they're going to put in there to, to seal up the space there in the floor and i don't know what it's going to be like when it's done if it's going to be roped off and you can't walk across it or if it's going to be so sturdy you can but it is it is smack in the middle of the of the ground floor and you'll be able to see it from the top so it's just one of the many great restoration projects going on in the capitol and that whole area around that seal is just nice shiny new marble and it looks really fantastic well the picture i saw did and and the comment underneath was some I think all of us have done this in buildings before. If you go to tour a capital or whatever, mm-hmm. you, you you go high and then you lean over and you try to take a picture, and that's a scary yes. experience. That's what they were writing. This was kind of a scary moment because one, if you drop your camera or whatever, who knows what's going to happen? That was number phone. one. That was number <laughs> one. But but also, but it looked it, it looked terrific, and yeah. it's it's turning into it always has been, but it needs to be restored. It's quite a show place now, isn't it? Oh, it is. It really is. The whole building is quite the show place. The new conference rooms are, are, are up and running. Of course, all the offices uh, for the senators and the representatives have been redone, and it is quite a show place. The main, the main one that I, I encourage people to come to is that that the new entryway. There was like there's like two entries into the building, but the new entryway that, that comes on the south side of the Capitol is just awesome. You walk in, and there's a big map of the state of Oklahoma on the floor there with. All 77 counties etched out, and it's a great it's a great way. First impressions are important, and we have a great first impression when you walk into the people's house here in Oklahoma City. And you had, I think, you, you had your picture taken and standing on K County, right? K and Osage, my district. K and Osage, left foot K County and right foot Osage County. So I had my district covered. Very good. Hey, uh, tackling some of the topics here, uh, it seems like we talk about this uh, every week, but we need to. The still the concern and the work being done about people's utility bills, and I know you've yeah. heard from a lot of people. A lot of people are getting their utility bills, and they're like, "Well, this isn't bad at all." Well, you know, nothing's happened yet. You know, and not everybody has uh, said nothing's happened yet. I did have a school di- in my district 
uh, get their gas bill this week, and it was a 7,000% increase oh my. from the previous year. So, you know, there's some things we're working on right now. Securitization is one of them to where we're going to, the state's going to take on the debt and sell it back as bonds because people will look and, and realize that it's probably going to, you know, it's, it's going to get paid back, but it's going to get paid back over a longer amount of time, perhaps as much as 10 years. So we are going to see our utility bills go up, but not at 7,000%. That is the plan today, and we're still working on that with a special committee and uh, the Attorney General's office. It was just a, it, it was just a big old deal that, that we're all going to have to pay somewhat eventually, and hopefully we'll be able to do it in a way where we can all get by and, and pay a smaller increase in our utility bills instead of that gigantic increase. Well, and there's, their bill's probably pretty good size anyway. But if somebody was to get, a, and mine was incremental. I mean, mine was $10 higher, I think. Uh, right. So it was hardly any distance. If somebody does get a jarring and alarming bill, who would they call? Or I mean, if it is to a point where, okay, this is ridiculous, I can't pay it, what do they do? That's a good question. I'd start with your state officials, your representative, and or your state senator. Okay. Uh let everybody know you can uh, uh, and talk to the utility. I can't pay all this. Can I pay part of it? And, and do pay part of it, which is what would have been your near normal amount. Okay. And, yeah. you know, and normal, uh, what we had in during the polar vortex, I think the average is about a 30% increase in usage because it was so cold. So, sure. you know, offer a, a bump up and, and because, you you know, everybody's usage went up, let alone that, that, that wild jump in the price of natural gas. And, that's really caused a lot of it, including the electric, because the electric uh, uses a lot of natural gas to, uh, to produce electricity. So it was just a, it was a big mess. N- nobody realized it was going to be that bad. And now we're analyzing what happened so it doesn't happen again. Yeah. You know, I was just going to say, I'm glad that we're talking about this again, right? Because I kind of forgot about it because you get that first bill and I had mine come back. And I was getting on my kids about turning off the lights. <laughs> you know, that they've been home. They're at home. They were at home uh, for homeschool and everything like that. And it's just like, man, turn off those lights. You know, what's going on when I'm not at home here? And they and, said, uh, <laughs> Dad, it was 20 below zero. <laughs> it was dark. <laughs> so I, I, I recall that. So thanks for bringing that up. And it's, I'm glad everybody's working on that. And I think probably the biggest thing is just communicate. Yeah. Right? Communicate to yeah. your, your provider. And, and I think these businesses will help and listen. You're not the only one. So the more that you just communicate and ask questions and, you know, this is what I can do, I think things will work out. Yeah. And, and I think what happened with the school district, whatever, wherever they're getting their gas from, maybe that company did not get the memo, hold off on these big charges till we get this figured out. Because I know most of the other uh, providers have not sent out the wacky bills that, yeah. that, that, that event caused you know the, the typical one i saw when when we were in a caucus meeting about it was you know if you if you average a hundred dollar utility bill it should be about three thousand dollars after this event so that's what we're trying to stop is to get in those kinds of bills we'll pay it over time but not not in one full swoop very good you know uh the the usage was also that's what you when you mentioned the 30 percent part at 30% higher, mm-hmm. we had uh, Jillian in with Central Electric, and she was talking about you have to really consider when it was 15 below zero, it was having to warm your home another 85 degrees or whatever. Yeah. As opposed, right, so right. so she used it like that. It said, look at how much you're having to heat your home up above what it normally mm-hmm. is. And so mm-hmm. usage is going to be nonstop. But it just it just is, no matter whether you knock it down a degree or two. But I have we, not taken mine out of my automatic withdrawal. Probably should, but I guess I thought I was skated through. I looked at the first one. I thought that wasn't bad. I'll leave it the way it is because it, mine just comes and it says, "Do not pay this bill." It's already been drafted. Yeah, basically, yeah, mine too. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think I got my uh, electric bill for the small apartment I have here in Oklahoma City, and I believe it normally around thirty-five dollars, and I think this month was fifty. So maybe I am starting to see some of that debt retirement from from the polar vortex i don't know what floor are you on but that's where you need the people down below to do all the work for you <laughs> i am on the second so if the heat rises there you uh, go i'm in good shape there you go you learn that through the years yeah, huh yeah. hey yeah, what what yeah. what about uh house bills that uh, are, are out there there's some interesting ones that are, are making the headlines anyway right well we're in the posture now of uh in the committees over here in the senate we are reading uh and voting on house bills 
And that's what we've been doing uh, most of this week is in our committee work. We've had very little floor work. So it's been all committee, and it's been reading uh, and voting on House bills. So we've got several of those going on. I have uh, four in a committee today that have uh, transferred over from the House. And I, I think I've got 16 total bills that I took on from, from House members. Anything stand out with those? Oh. Because the controversial ones are the ones that make the news. They just are. But one that, about the that, Oklahoma promise where you – yeah, you would have to if you don't com- complete your degree, you would have to pay it, pay uh, your tuition back or all your bills back, and um, that seemed to have some controversy. I don't know your thoughts on that, but uh, is that one you have to address when it comes over? Uh, I think we addressed our own version in the Senate. I'm not sure on the details. I know we did have a a lengthy debate on something involving OLAP, which, which is Oklahoma's promise on the Senate floor. And what you'll see, guys, a lot of times is. Uh, Identical bills will be running in both chambers. So I'll give you a, for instance, I'm running a bill that allows the district attorneys to, to not have to keep paper records on everything yeah. as long as they digitize it, in, in which they've already been doing. So I've got a version of that that I ran through the Senate, and then I'm running the same version through the House. And if something gets stuck, something happens, something goes wrong, then you've got another version that's still alive over there. And uh, it, it's an interesting process. Uh, I can understand, you know, something if something goes wrong with a Senate bill. I'll right. give you an example. There was a, a, a fence bill that Senator Murdoch from Felt ran, and it failed off the Senate floor. But I've got the same version coming over from the House uh, that, that keeps it alive and has legs to it. Although I found out yesterday that I, I have to do some some serious requesting to, to get that heard in the Senate. So okay. if something goes wrong, that's why you run two, uh, two separate chambers, the same bill. Boy, it's interesting, all the things you have to learn just to be able to navigate. And, uh, and you've got enough uh, seasoning now where you understand all that. But it's always interesting to me to see, hear how these things work. And you almost have, just like in any industry, you have a backup plan, right? And that's what it sounds yeah. like that, that's being worked exactly. out. So. Exactly. Exactly. How are your alcohols? Uh, that, that's one of the th- <laughs> Jesse's laughing. He's like, I knew he'd get to alcohol <laughs> eventually. But uh, you're involved in a lot of alcohol issues as far as the bills are concerned, right? Yeah, the, that's, uh, I think, all four of my bills today involve alcohol in business, commerce, and tourism. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if you've ever seen those self four machines. I've seen them on cruise ships and in New Orleans where you put your credit card in and how much wine do you want and out it pours. Well, you can't do that in the state of Oklahoma without changing the laws. So I've got yeah. a, a law in there today that, uh, or a bill in there today that will, will allow for, for those self four machines to come in. Uh, <laughs> that the more, the most interesting one I've got and controversial of all the alcohol bills I'm running probably is, is cocktails to go where you could, you could order a cocktail at a restaurant and go and pick it up curbside. And it would come in a container that is sealed so uh, it, it would come like in an orange juice bottle, yeah. and the seal on it, when they slap the cap on there, it puts the seal on there. And uh, so law enforcement would know if you unsealed it in your car or not. But right now, the restaurant industry is, of course, reeling from the effects of COVID. And, and they believe in the restaurant industry that the curbside per, uh, pickup mm-hmm. is going to be a part of their business forever now. And that's one of the reasons I do want to run that bill is to help the restaurant industry. Yeah, you know, I, I did see something on that, and I saw the opposition speaking, and and not to take a a slam at it, but it, it sounded more like the gentleman talking was was uh, trying to reinvoke prohibition more than anything else. So it was more of an alcohol issue that he it sounded like, as opposed to the common sense angle that you seem to be taking with almost all your bills is more of a common sense approach, right? It, that gentleman, uh, he will debate against every alcohol bill because he had a, a tragic event in his life. Okay. And I know who you're talking about. And anything that, that is any pro-alcohol, he will get up there and he will say the same thing and he will be dead set against it. So it's not like cocktails to go is the most controversial thing ever as far as that gentleman is concerned. But, but there's you. certainly some ramifications you have to look into. I believe yeah, I believe in the bill that the, the, the cocktail – while it's sealed, still has to be placed in the trunk or the bed of a pickup out of the reach of the driver till they get home. So, so hopefully we can get this pushed through there. So, you know, I think people would like to order a Mexican dinner to go and have a margarita right. with it. It, it. I'm not advocating that you have a hundred of them 
right. on, on your way home or anything like that. It's just it's just to help these restaurants out, get some more business going because they have certainly uh, had to change their business model and certainly have lost a lot of sales because of the pandemic. Yeah. Well, it sounded to me more like uh, the buying cold beer at a, wherever it might be. It's still illegal to, to pop that open, and it mm-hmm. should be. You can't drink it on your way home, but you can purchase right. it like that. So it sounded similar right. to me. So anything else we yeah, want to get is. out there? I know you got a meeting think, coming at 9 o'clock. I think we covered everything. So anything you need to ask him, Jesse? As a, no, I, I think I'm good. You want to ask no. him who the next president at Oklahoma State University is going to be? I already asked him that. He didn't know. So I don't know either. So you probably have more insight than I do because I'm completely out in the dark. Uh, I think, Sometimes I think, I, we, I think last I heard, we were down to the final four. Really? Well, yeah, that's the last I'll I have to check my bracket to see who I had. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Hey, thanks for all you do, and uh, we'll talk to you next Thursday then. And, uh, all right. If you need me to send you this one, I can do that too. So, No, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> thanks. I appreciate it. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. Have a good weekend. There you, you go. Good. There is State Senator Bill Coleman, who also is the owner of Triple Play Sports Radio. And what we were talking about uh, to start that, he had a parent <clears throat> reach out that uh, knew that uh, – uh, that, that he'd been talking, they'd been talking about the son who had, had been at the State Fair Arena mm-hmm. and OYE and stuff and asked if they could have a copy. And we just happened to have it, I had it handy and ready. And so that's a nice thing to have. So keep that as a souvenir. Well, I remember those as a kid, right? You, you'd wait for your birthday. You know, the, we listened to a station in Emporia, Kansas. Are they mentioned uh, birthdays? And they had birthdays. You know, you could put a request in and, and there's a segment. I'm sure you probably had that somewhere in your right. career, right? And uh, you waited and he- heard your name. You're like, they just said my name on the radio. You know, one of the my favorite segments that I ever did, and this was as a <clears throat> college kid, uh, age anyway, in Springfield. And there is everybody has a, a Bob Berry type of legend, mm-hmm. right? Well, the guy who did the, the sports there at 4.40 and, and 5.40 in the afternoon was the, and he's in the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame, but he was the anchor and sports director of one of the TV stations. And he was, if you're growing up in that part of the country, uh, he was probably the most famous guy in that region. His mm-hmm. name was Ned Reynolds, and he'd been there forever, and everybody knew Ned. And so when I got to do segments with Ned, that was pretty cool, right? Yeah, and yeah. so uh, even though that wasn't my normal shift, when people be on vacation, they felt comfortable enough to put me in drive time or whatever. So I get to do that. And it happened to be my grandma's birthday, right? And so I had him wish my grandma a happy birthday. And, you know, he comes on and goes, Ann, I think he even said my buddy, because they still have the cassette. My buddy yeah. Steve Daniels tells me, and and that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and they, and they kept it or whatever. But Ned Reynolds wished her happy birthday. That's a big deal. And you were uh, the good grandson, right? And I was a good guy. Yeah. I, I got credit yeah, for yeah, it, yeah. you know. So, no, that is cool. So, and I know, I've heard Dave Hunziker do that on, on the radio and stuff, and that's neat. Yeah, so. and, you know, they've integrated a little bit in some of our broadcasts with, uh, you know, tweets, and Casey Kendrick's done it a little bit on Cowgirl Basketball Games where they're reading tweets, and so there's a little bit of that listener interaction through radio. So it's been fun to see it kind of evolve a little bit, and, and when you get those listeners feeling like they're a part of that broadcast, it, it's good. Yeah, but glad Bill's taking care, you know, like a constituent wanted it, and then it worked out that way. So. Yeah.